Hello, everyone. I am Michelle Linford here with Shirley Griffiths. We are so excited to be part of DigiSit Summit 21. And we'll just jump right in with introductions. I'm the executive director of Epic Deliberate Digital. We've been involved in the space around using technology for good since 2014. And we've been involved with the DigiSit Summit since its inception. In fact, in 2017, we hosted the Digit Summit here in Utah, and that was where this concept, this movement of use tech for good was born. We're so happy to see that it is a worldwide movement, and we're thrilled to be a part of this event, this month-long event. Epic's been focusing this year in particular on digital wellness, so the focus on digital well-being, and mental health um, is right in line with our, our goals this year even. Um, I'm also excited about the fact that the topics that we'll be discussing today in our presentation tie into a white paper that we wrote, we, we collaboratively wrote um, in 2017 for the summit that covered prevention science, use tech for good and media literacy. And we'll be covering all those topics today. Cheryl Lee, would you like to tell us a little bit about you and your organization? Yes, absolutely. So my name is Cheryl Lee Griffiths, and I am the director of My Discovery Destination and the coordinator for the Discovery Family Coalition. And our entire goal is to strengthen families, build resilience in kids. Really what we want to do is get families to spend time together. Um, we have... A, we're a fairly new organization. We started back in 2017, and actually, from the beginning, we have collaborated with Use Tech for Good. They just, when I was introduced to Michelle and, you know, and, the, and that concept, it just really resonated. That is what I have always, um, always wanted to see people using their technology to do good things. And so our the first summer passport program that we did, the entire focus was on use tech for good. And we have included um, adventures as we call them and just anything that we, that we do, we always have that use tech for good component. So we're very excited to be able to be with Michelle during this workshop and, uh, and help support the, their mission and the DigiSit Summit 2021. Thank you. And we are we are so happy for the enthusiasm that you bring to the Use Tech for Good movement. I, I meant to mention we had we started with our first slide. Um, Shirley had a power outage and an internet outage. She's had quite a crazy day. So we um, don't have her on video today. But so we've just been holding our first slide up and we'll now just jump right into to, um, explaining what's here. This is, this is what is called the social development strategy. It's based on 40 years of prevention science work. Prevention science or behavioral science is sometimes called, focuses on trying to help youth live more healthy lives. And they've looked at multiple um, risky behaviors and problematic behaviors and how they can help youth live in more healthy ways. One of the ways is to reduce risks. So for example, with drugs, you want to reduce access to drugs, but social development strategy and is, is on the protective side of prevention science, trying to help youth be stronger from the inside out. And this ties in directly with the work that both My Discovery Destination and Epic Deliberate Digital, but both of our organizations do. We, we want to focus on, we focus on helping youth and adults work side by side to build relationships. And that bonding is a protective factor that they have found through research over 40 years again, that bonding helps prevent behavioral issues. So we're going to talk a little bit more about how we can apply these principles in really fun and simple ways. This is what my discovery destination is all about. So um, 
why don't you tell us a little bit more about how you apply social development strategy and what you do, Shirley? Okay, excellent. So yes, we have, first of all, all of the adventures that we, that we provide to families, everything we do is totally free. Basically, we provide to families these, these opportunities to be together. Um, our so goal can, you, is, can you start by showing us your site so they can get a feel for what you mean when you talk about adventures? Um, yes, let me share a different size then. Okay, we're going to do a lot of a lot of um, slide flipping here. So <laughs> yeah, we'll be going back Bear with us. <laughs> you, can you see that? Um, I'm still seeing I'm, I'm not seeing your other tab with your website okay because i am on okay so this is a, an example of our the different adventures and you can see here we have a lot of different variety um some of these adventures are they're basically the fun with prevention built around. For example, as Michelle mentioned, we ended up with a snowstorm today. I didn't think that we would be releasing our snow adventures this early, but hey, you know, 10 inches of snow, we released the snow adventures. And, um, and that's another thing that's really nice about our program is that it can be very timely and, and it really fits with as things happen in the communities, we can, we can address what is going on right then. Um, with these, obviously this is the fun with prevention built around it. Um, and we'll get more into that later, but, but this is, we, we've taken the fun activities that families do together and we build that prevention around it. In some of the other adventures, we actually take the prevention Things like mental health strategies, work and responsibility, um, defining your center. We've got a lot of growth mindset topics where we take the prevention concept and we build the fun around it so that, um, so that the families are, are having an interactive experience together where they learn that, you know, building that growth mindset, they learn that the words that they use matter and they practice you know, using the growth mindset words where they, they learn to develop grit through some fun activities together. So and resilience um, is something that you've built into everything that you do. That's one of your key goals is to help youth build resilience. Yes, absolutely. So let me show you just a sample of these. Let's actually, this before you do, before you do the flashlight fun, will you scroll up just a little bit so we can give them a sneak peek? We'll be coming back to this, but there yeah. is a use tech for good. You see, there's a use tech yes, for good adventure go. already in place. So that's going to be one of the things that we're going to leave you with. I just wanted to give them that, yeah, very that little good. sneak peek. Okay. Yeah, very good. So yeah, so let's take it. Let's take a look. This flashlight fun is just super, super fun. You know, new adventures. We've moved into fall and the nights are getting longer. Um, so this has... You know, with each of the adventures we have, there's of course the goal um, of what the family is, is the, the setting out to accomplish the adventure. And again, these, this is just, you know, very simple. Let's try out a few of the flashlight games below. Now, why we say the adventures, because as they complete these adventures, they actually can record their completion and they earn points and then points become prizes. So that's just kind of a fun thing. We're kind of rewarding them for doing what, you know, what they really should be doing anyway, but you know, hey, it's always fun when there's a prize. So the adventure is just to try out a few of the flashlight games. And then if, as we go down, you'll see these, the different, you know, different games. We've got lots and lots of them there. They can choose the, the, the games that they want. Again, our goal is for them to spend time together so they can tailor this however they want. You know, obviously it's going to look very different if they have, you know, for, for a family with young children than it will for a family with teenagers or a family that has all of the ages. Our goal is for them to, to tweak this, to do what works for their family. 
Um, and so we provide the resources. One other really important part that we love is the tip section where we are providing the, the parents with just some tips, mostly reminders. I like to say we teach them what they don't know, mostly just remind them what they do know because most parents know what to do. We just get really busy being parents and we forget to be intentional. So this tip section is just there to really remind parents to utilize the time that they have, the time that they're spending with their kids to be intentional in designing it such that it will build resilience, that it will, you know, let the kids take the lead. Remember to give that recognition and, you know, encourage them to use their creativity and, and just all of that. So um, Which is so all, just, you'll show us in a few minutes that it all maps back to the social development strategy. Yep, yep, exactly. Okay, so I have a question for you, and I know you're going to answer this with what you're going to show us next, but one of the issues around digital citizenship and children and youth is privacy and protecting privacy. And, and a yeah. lot of parents may see this and say, hey, but I don't want to be showing pictures of my kids on the internet. So Show us what you have to help answer that concern. Yes, so we actually have an adventure for that. In fact, one of our one of our promotional campaigns, if you will, is yes, there's an adventure for that. <laughs> so <laughs> online safety, yes, there is an adventure for that. Um, and so here we go. Um, and we actually include this. The next thing we talk about will be the hunts. And this is included in every single hunt that we do. Because again, as parents, now when they're, when they're completing the adventures on the website, this is actually all very private, okay? So that's one of the benefits for families that want to use the website. Everything is very private. But when I show you the hunt, you, that you will see that, or, or it's, we call it the discovery, the, our discovery hunt app. Um, it is not at all private. So this becomes very, very important. And so, yes, we have an adventure to help teach um, families how to um, take online safe photos. So, you know, using the, the appendages, um, we're not showing the faces or taking it from the side or from the top, um, you know, from the back, using the lighting to obscure the faces or distance. Um, and this is a really fun one that we actually got from one of our families. They call it uh, anonymous, <laughs> and they <laughs> put a little mouse face over, over each of their pictures. So that's really fun. So this is a great way to, you know, we just want to remind families that, especially when they're in a, um, then that's that public space to be aware of, of what they're what they're putting out there and, and to do so in a safe way. So let me go ahead and show you the other. So I'm gonna so I'm, if I may, I wanted to interject. Yeah. I'm gonna be a grandma here soon. And um this this is also great input for parents and grandparents if and as they want to share photos of their children on social media, that there are ways that they can do it and and protect their children's digital footprint. Still yeah. share some of the fun without sharing all of the information, the identity. So yes, it's, it's a great, it's a great adventure. Yep. This is a great adventure that you have provided. <laughs> well, thank you. We've had a lot For the of great adventure of parenting and, and grandparenting. <laughs> That's right. So, okay. So yeah, this is one platform that we provide these adventures on, um, you know, being the, um, you know, the website, and we call it the Discovery Family Adventures. You can see here more. Um, but then we, we also have, we found a really fun tool we've had for about a year now, and we just love it. This is an app form, which some families really love using the app because it's really easy. Um, it is literally built to be easy. So it's always in their, in their pocket. Um, families, this is really fun. You're actually looking here at the back end. Um, but if you, and you'll have a chance, we're also going to provide you with a, um, with a fun hunt that you can, um, that you can do a media challenge hunt. Um, but with this, you know, families can go in and again, they see, you know, that there are the different missions. So when they pull this up on their phone, they can see the missions. You can see here, we do include with every hunt, 
um, this, you know, the, a note about safety and the link back to that adventure that we showed, because this is very public. Let's go ahead and show you the activity feed. Um, so if, it, when I'm on Goose Chase, if I sign up, I can see this feed. So I can see, as we were looking through this earlier, she's like, oh, this family's baking cookies as we speak. So yeah. it's, it's this, it's a, it has a social element too, where families can connect with each other and see what they're doing and being aware of privacy and the degree of exposure that you want for your family is important for this feed. Yep, absolutely. So you can see this family. So this was 14 minutes ago. They completed the falling dominoes adventure. We actually put out some new adventures um, just today. We did, and as we get closer to Halloween, we'll put out the more specific, you know, Halloween. Um, but this one, you know, 24 minutes ago, the, this family was doing the candy launch. Um, they can, with this, there are missions. It can be a picture. It can be a, a, a you know, a, a short video clip. And sometimes they are text. So again, you can just see the great fun that families, oh my goodness, that's fun how they did that. <laughs> some creative expression too yeah so you can see you know that the families I, I just I love going through when when I need that pick me up um, and reminder of why we do what we do I come go through the feed and I see families having a blast dads being involved with their kids um, it just it just makes makes my heart happy okay here's a cash valley family i can see because they had no power today <laughs> so it looks like this was their unplug for a day what a great day for them to unplug oh, good call <laughs> so um so anyway yeah this is a really fun um you can see the the leaderboard so for families that, that are a little competitive and they want to you know they we have lots of fun prizes that we that we give out for you know, families that get the most points. Um, and then also we can go in. So this is something that we can see in the back end that I can actually go in and, um, you know, and, and see the different submissions and give them bonus points and, you know, give them feedback and, and whatnot. So a, a really fun way uh, for families to spend time together. And again, we'll, we'll show how this all, you know, pulls, uh, ties in to the to the social development strategy um, so, we also i have a question for you yeah um conceivably this could be used in a classroom right yes absolutely so we have we use this tool in so many different ways um let me mention just a few so we have first of all we did at the youth leadership summit we had so much fun with this that was a, a two-day event for youth across the state. Um, now they were not able to be together because of with COVID issues. Um, uh, and so this was a really fun way to kind of bring everyone together while, while not being together. Um, and we actually had, there were 159 teams and they submitted almost 5,000 missions that they completed. One of my favorites on that was the so we had them, it was a prevention conference. So it was focused on youth prevention. And so, so some of the missions, we actually spelled out the, the word prevention and they were to, to share a picture um, of, so they were actually, let me clarify, they were together in their counties, but the counties, it wasn't, they weren't together as a state. So they were together with maybe 10 to 15 youth in the county. Um, and then we actually, were, let's see, did that quit sharing? Yeah, because I'm okay. just letting you talk and because okay, then I'll be perfect. showing this. Yeah. <laughs> so they, so we had them, we spelled out prevention and they were to share the, um, a, a something in about one of their teammates or one of their, their friends or leaders that a quality that started with that letter. And it was so much fun no, to have so fun. these, 
kids were going around, you know, sharing with the, about their friend, this quality, you know, that they're, you know, P they're, they're very patient with me or, um, you know, whatever it was, it was amazing. And then just the, the missions were all about, you know, prevention efforts and doing good in the community. And we actually did a follow-up component where they then went back into their communities and, and utilize the things that they had learned. So that's so that really, is that, is that, is that hunt still available? So if a group wanted to do a youth prevention summit, could they go Absolutely. in and access this? So it's already there. Well, we would, we would actually create a new one for a them. New so one. They would okay. have their own, but, but we could make a copy of that. So yeah, they could have those, they could have those same missions. So they could replicate a lot of these activities. If there were youth leaders yeah. or schools who are interested in reinforcing principles of behavioral health. Yes, and absolutely. you have resources that could help them do that. Yep, absolutely. We can replicate that. We can personalize it for the school, you know, so that they can like take, you know, take the original, but then also personalize it so that it fits for their school. Um, we've also done the, um, let's see, the, the Halloween hunt that we showed you, which is kind of geared towards families. We also have lots of resources for schools. We've got, we do, uh, we've got ribbon week hunts that have been really effective in helping kind of that home to school connection. So getting the parents involved in what's happening at the school. And then also we did a, um, a, a family civics chase with the, with the Utah Board of Education, which really promotes that civic engagement and you know, encourages, again, the families, it encourages families to spend time together doing the civic engagement, but also ties that, that connection to the school. So we have, we have used this in so many fun ways. So we really have those, the two platforms. Some families love the website. Some families love the app. And you know what? Some families use both because they, you know, they both have their pros and cons, um, like with anything. <laughs> so, and then the one other component, you know, main component of our program, there are lots of different components, but the other really main component of the program, Michelle's going to, to share with you our Discover Family Fun Communities. And what these are, this is where we can get really local to the community. Again, our goal is to get the families to spend time together. And so we have these, um, their, their Facebook communities. Um, and then we do have an app that for families that do not, um, you know, that, that aren't on Facebook or, you know, don't use, use Facebook or whatever. But you can see here in this community, we share the information. Of course, the free things that we're offering. We also share all kinds of other free things that are happening in their community. So for example, if we go down further right now, we have, you know, some, some um, classes going on from um, 4-H and our library, you know, all kinds of fun things that are happening at the library. We're also able to, you know, utilizing these tools, this the Discover Family Fund community, as well as the, you know, the app and the tools, we can support other organizations that share that same mission. For example, the Use Tech for Good Adventure. You know, we've also collaborated with, um, you know, with some of the other organizations that have great resources for parents, and we can put their resources into an adventure, or we can share it here in the, you know, in the Discover Family Fun communities. And then we can also share some of the important prevention messaging here in these communities. So I kind of liken it to, you know, the grocery store. If you think about it, you know, you go to the grocery store to get um, milk and eggs and cheese, you know, <laughs> but as you're there getting that, you also see all kinds of other stuff. <laughs> well, that's kind of what with these communities, families come to these communities to find all of the free stuff. But yeah, there's a great, there's another one of our campaigns, which is this is building resilience. So we can tuck these messages in. And here's a fun thing about this particular campaign. These are actually from our hunts. So these are our discover fam our discovery families that have submitted. They, they, these are the adventures. They did the adventures, submitted this picture. And now what we're showing here, this message, just reminding parents that, hey, the things that you do with your kids, that's building resilience, okay? 
Um, spending time together. There's another one, you know, where they were washing the car together, working together. This is building resilience. All of these, you know, different things that you do. Oh, we do have, you know, Mental Health Monday, um, where we, you know, share, share meant, um, tips on mental health. Right now, we're kind of going through 24 tips of things that they can do. On Wednesdays, we actually do Digital, Wednesday, um, digital Wellness Wednesday. And Michelle is actually sh um, sharing those and covering that to help with tips of things that, um, that families can do. So, and then on Thursday- um, There's your ribbon week that you were talking about. Yep, the, yeah, there are the, the ribbon weeks um, that we can provide for families. Um, on Thursday, we focus on physical health and on Fridays, it's Financial Friday. So again, we can get, we're providing in these communities, we provide all kinds of resources for families and for parents to help them be the very best they can be. Again, reminding them, you know, teaching them what they don't know, but mostly just reminding them on a daily, uh, daily basis. Now, a really important thing about these communities um, for you to know, our goal is not for them to get in the community and, you know, engage and comment and spend a lot of time in the community. The goal is get in, get the information, get out and go be a great parent. So we are perhaps, you know, when you talk about the um, the attention economy, that's kind of a big thing right now. We are one place on the internet, if not maybe the only place on the internet where we actually remind parents to get out and go be a parent. You know, we'll, we'll give them that information. We share that, you know, here's a free adventure. Now, what is the very best thing you could be doing with your time right now? And we actually had one mother that, you know, that responded and she said, getting off of Facebook, you know, with kind of with a laugh. And I said, so go do it. You know, I mean, that's our goal is to provide them with resources, use the technology they have for good, get the, get the great resources that you need and then get off and go be, go be a great parent. Um, and the community is formed by sharing the ideas, but not necessarily lingering and talking and, and in, engaging there. It's engaging in real life and showing snippets of it to reinforce and, and build creativity and, oh, we should try that. But really the focus is on building these relationships, this bonding that is that protective factor for good behavioral health. So should we go back to that? that model so you can show us how yeah. everything you're doing is mapping right to that model. Yes, absolutely. So let's do, okay, and that's what I was afraid, closing it. I'm not seeing it now. Can I'm gonna pause for a second. Okay, excellent. So going back to this, the social development strategy, of course, as Michelle mentioned, our goal is for kids to follow this, this path of clear standards to healthy behaviors. Okay, so again, now looking at the different resources that we provide. So first of all, it's, there's tons of variety. It's very flexible. Our goal is, as mentioned, for the parents to alter this, make, make adjustments, make this really fit their family um, so, that, so that it works for their family. And then each adventure is designed to provide those opportunities for kids to build skills, either learn new skills or enhance the skills that they already have. And then again, that tip section is about reminding the parents to provide that recognition, provide the opportunities to take the lead, encourage them to be creative, um, you know, providing that those intrinsic um, rewards that, that we so often get busy parenting and just forget to do that part. And um, you also and even include some prizes too. So you've got both the intrinsic yeah. and a little bit of external reinforcement as well, right? Yes, absolutely. And in fact, one thing that I should mention, I'll just kind of throw in right here. Um, in those adventures, we also, so we have the basic level, 
which is focused on the family. And we also do throw in suggestions for the pre-K and suggestions for teens, because again, they're very different. But we also have a community engagement level, which is to really encourage um, kids to engage with their community. Um, if you're familiar with you know, the SHARP survey and the protective factors, connecting with the community is really important. And unfortunately, the data is moving in the wrong direction. Our kids are becoming less connected to their communities. And so we need to really encourage them to, to connect. So we actually have a, and you know, each adventure has a community engagement level that, that encourages them to get out. You know, a lot of times it either involves teaching, you know, teaching their peers what they've learned or doing some type of service. You know, maybe they've you know, baked with apples is one of the fun adventure that's out there right now. You know, now you take that that dessert that you baked and you, you know, to deliver it to a neighbor or, or something. So anyway, so yeah, very much um, that recognition and engaging with the community. And so as and can, I, can I insert, I don't know if you're going to be covering this, but in the social development strategy, they talk about different spheres of engagement yep. with peers at school, in family, and in the community. And so this idea of opportunity, skills, and recognition is, is ideal when it cuts across all of, those, all of those spheres. So these part of the reason that we wanted to share this is My Discovery Destination is an example of a program. And by the way, the resources for families are free. Um, it's an example of a program that reinforces the principles of a model that has been proven to work to help children and youth be healthy across, again, multiple behavioral issues they've measured across basically every problematic behavior that you can, that you can imagine with, with youth. And they found that this model works across the board. And so we hope that teachers and administrators and community leaders can become more aware of this, this social development strategy and find ways to build in um, opportunity, skills, and, and recognition for youth in the community. So I just wanted to add that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. And that is we focus, those adventures really are designed to, to hit all of those areas, starting with the home, reaching out then into the community. And then again, as I mentioned, we have resources for schools to help build that home to school or school to home, however you want to look at it, <laughs> that connection between it also addresses kind of the low commitment to school that, that most um, schools are struggling with. We want to build those connections. It's all about connecting, starting in the home, and then reaching out to community and to the school. And then of course, as parents are, you know, spending this time with their kids, they're having these wonderful experiences. Um, in fact, I just have to tell you this one really fun during part of our summer passport program, one of the adventures was dance in the rain. Well, here in Utah, we didn't have a whole lot of rain. We're kind of in a drought. <laughs> and we had one mother that shared in her feedback, um, she said, you know what, this was so much fun. She, she said, when it started to rain, I just dropped everything and ran out with my kids and danced in the rain. And she said, the only reason I did that was because I knew we had that mission that we needed to complete. And she said, normally I would have said, oh, we'll do it next time. But because she knew that, that you know, hey, this is a mission and we, you know, we need to complete this. She went and she danced in the rain with her kids and had just a fabulous experience. And that puts parents in a, in a position then where that bonding takes place and they're in a better position to be able to set those clear standards that will then help their kids follow that path of clear standards to those healthy behaviors. What so I love about that story is that in the, in the, in this, in the spirit of use tech for good, the fact that this mother had reviewed possible adventures, they were present in her mind. And so when an opportunity presented itself, she jumped on it, whereas it really is easy to just get distracted or distracted by what we're doing, kind of so focused in whatever our tasks may be that it can be easy to forget relationship moments or to miss them. And so, 
having that present in her mind, I love that it, it increased her spontaneity, which is not necessarily the way you would think about, this is a really unique way that, that, that the technology is facilitating more real life living. So I love that. I think you have another story to tell us yes. about a, yes, a really I powerful do. success story. I do one more story. Um, we had, this was actually an outcome we did not really plan. Okay. We, we did not, I mean, our goal is to, you know, build family bonds. Absolutely. You know, get families to spend time together. Uh, but we had last, um, actually it was early in the year. We had one mother that reached out and said, Hey, can I call you? You know, and I was, I said, sure, you know, thinking, oh dear, you know, <laughs> what, what, what um, is, is coming? Have we done something wrong? And so she called me and she said, I just wanted to share with you a story about my, she said her nine-year-old son um, that has struggled with anxiety and depression for, you know, almost from the beginning of, you know, I mean, as early as, as you can, I guess, identify that that's what they're struggling with. Um, and had been in counseling for many years trying to, and, and she, she shared with me that it just seemed to be getting worse and worse and worse. And then um, her sister had introduced them to our program. They actually start off with one of the discovery hunts. Um, I believe it was the, the last, the fall hunt that's, that's very similar to the Halloween hunt that we have going right now. Um, but they started doing these hunts and and I'll tell you what, their family, they're so much fun to see the submissions that they, you know, that they turn in. And I mean, they, that family knows how to have fun and they enjoyed the missions. They enjoyed the adventures. But what she shared with me, she said, last time we went into his counselor, she said, he talked about nothing but these hunts and how he was helping to, you know, to the family to win these prizes. And he was, you know, he was helping to, to decide what they would do. And she said, he just talked so excitedly about these hunts. And the counselor was kind of like, you know, wow, okay. I think we've kind of made some progress here. Um, and, and then we had several other parents that reached out commenting specifically on how this was helping with their kids' anxiety and depression. And again, that was not, we were thrilled. We're absolutely thrilled to know that it's helping that way. It was an outcome that we hadn't really, you know, planned. We didn't, we didn't build that into the program necessarily. We weren't thinking about that, but we have really come to understand from, from parental feedback that this program is actually helping with anxiety and depression, which again is, you know, prevention, prevention at its core. It's re it's it's reinforcing the principles of the social development strategy that organically children are more healthy when they are engaged side by side with people who care about them. And the other thing that that um, that stands out to me from the story as you shared it with me initially is that the parents were giving these these in the tips in many of your adventures you encourage the parents to let the children take leadership roles so that they can help lead the planning and help with the brainstorming. So it's not the parents talking at or acting, you know, in that, that they really are working side by side. And that gives these, these youth opportunity to build some of these softer skills or the, the less concrete, you know, life skills of leadership and planning and cooperation and creativity and, and give and take and these kinds of things. Yeah, absolutely. And that really comes into play. So obviously that's happening on the basic adventure for families, but that also really comes into play on the community engagement level that I mentioned, where, you know, a lot of times it's, it's organizing a neighborhood, you know, maybe it's a bike rodeo, the basic adventure is, you know, going on a family bike ride. And then the community engagement level is organizing a neighborhood bike rodeo and the kids, I mean, to them, they're just having fun. But in the background, in the process of having fun, they're learning communication skills, planning skills, um, you know, problem solving skills, you know, oh, dear, it's going to rain on the day that we <laughs> that we have it scheduled. What, you know, what do we do here? Flexibility they're, and adaptation. Yeah, they're learning all yeah. of life skills. In, just in the process of having fun. 
to them, they're just having fun, but they're, but they're in the background, they're developing all kinds of key life skills that will serve them throughout their lives. And this again, does. as you mentioned for, with the parents, they're being reminded, a lot of them have commented on how, you know, just having, having the ideas and the reminders of things to do and, and also the reminder of how to be intentional. We've gotten a lot of feedback that from parents that it's helping them be more intentional instead of just doing, they're starting to think now, you know, even outside of the program, they're, they're thinking, okay, how can I utilize this time? How can I utilize this opportunity to build resilience in my kids? How can I help them, you know, and give them the, the opportunity that's going to serve them better? That's great. It's a, it's a way to, I think in our digital world, it can be really easy to, to kind of get in ruts and sometimes even a trance of just whatever is happening. You know, we get on social media, we watch the news when there's a tool like this that can spark that kind of creativity. And it's more than a tool. It's the concept and the principles behind what you've done that again, map to to, to behavioral science. And it's really fun to hear you talk about the different um, layers and levels of involvement as these adventures invite involvement in the community because it, doves it dovetails beautifully with the Digit Summit's theme of being an impactor. And so I feel like we've, we've come full circle and, and really hit to the heart of what the summit is about, to be able to use tech for good, to have an impact, a positive impact on the world around us. So it's, thank you so much for sharing um, what you do. And we're going to, like we've, we've hinted at um, the fact that we have a couple of action opportunities for you. So let's see if I can find the right page. So we're using, I use the phrase, let it begin with me. But a combination of understanding social development and strategy, using tech for good and media literacy, we haven't talked specifically about today, but we are going to share a, um, we will be providing a, a hunt as Shirley has been discussing on Goose Chase around media literacy. And media literacy is another one of these protective factors that as youth and adults build skills of raising, understanding more about how media are constructed and designed to manipulate often, to manipulate often to make money, that the more we become aware of this, the less impact, the less negative impact it can have because then we are the actors not being acted upon by the media. So we are excited to be able to provide you two things. One is a media literacy um, hunt. And here are just a few glimpses of the types of activities that will be there. TV show telepathy, moved by a movie, um, looking at a, 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 a based on a true story movie and then doing some research to see what is fact and what is fiction. Mail madness, sorting your mail to see the different quantities of mail that you actually want versus all the junk mail, kind of a, a parallel to the digital world. Ad alert, walking the cereal aisle and looking at packaging. There's just a, a variety. And these are only a few of the activities that will be in this, in this hunt. And we also already gave you a little glimpse of the use tech for a good mission that already exists on my discovery destination. So there's the link, um, my discovery destination.com slash discovery. And they, do they need to sign up for account for an account to be able to see that screen? No, no, that is a great question. So this, the information is out there. The adventures are out there. Anyone can utilize them. Now, if you do register, it will create a really fun adventure photo journal. 
which is a fun way to then be able to go back and, you know, kind of have a fun memory experience with the family and whatnot. Um, and of course, if they want to, if they want to have that adventure photo journal, then the computer does just, it just needs the, the enough information to tie those adventures to the family. Okay. So, um, so but that, that is, but that is also a, a link that they can just access. Yes. Yep. That's okay. just there. They could get straight to the adventure. No registration required at all. And on Goose Chase to find this uh, media literacy hunt, search for media literacy with Watson or use the code 8XVMZW. And obviously you'll have um, an access to these slides. And if you have any questions, then you can reach out to either one of us. I'm at michelle at epic.org and Shirley is Shirley at mydiscoverydestination.com. Thank you for being with us today. Again, we're so happy and grateful to have been part of the Digit Summit this year. And we look forward to hearing your stories about how you're using tech for good to have a positive impact on the world around you.